Ladies and gentlemen, fellas, 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 welcome into what is the season finale of the Thursday Night Football Slate. And it will be officially closing up the content for Thursday Night Football this year on 6 p.m. Thursday, East Coast time for an hour answering your questions. We'll be there. We're going through the projections, rankings, ownership, any questions you have, my 150 max builds, questions on your lineup, and about this slate between the Los Angeles Chargers, million dollar rookies to first place, and the Los Vegas Raiders. So these West Coast opponents are going to be battling it off, and we're going to be breaking down the whole thing because what we do here is we smack your Around. We smack you around with that information. We give you all the info that you need on every single viable player. And I'll let you know early on if I have a yes by them, and maybe or a no based on my exposures and interests. And then we finalize that on the live stream tomorrow. So I'm going to crack down into it. I have projections, rankings, ownership, all that stuff is already up on my Patreon link down below. Go ahead, check it out down below. Just follow along with it. See all the types of tools that we have available there. And you can follow along during the video. But before we get into it, hit that like and subscribe. I appreciate that a ton. And be sure to hit the notification bell so you know when we're going live. And the other thing is also this video is brought to you by Superdraft. And what is Superdraft? A lot of people People already know because you're already signed up and you're probably winning dollar rookies and having a better chance at winning them over there because the contests don't fill. There's less professionals over there, but it's a multiplier format where Justin Herbert, for example, if he scores 21 fantasy points tonight, he will get 1x multiplier to get 21 fantasy points. But let's just say Mike Williams, if he's healthy for this game, and even if he's not, the example still stands. If he scores 10 fantasy points, he has a 2.2x multiplier. You multiply it by that multiplier, he actually scores 22 fantasy points. So even though he's scoring less than half the points as Herbert, he's actually going to score more super draft points based on that multiplier format. It's a ton of fun. You can basically play whoever you want. Check it out down below. There's a link. And if you use my name, Sal, S-A-L, you will get a free money bonus up to $1,000 rookies in a slow drip format. Be sure to check it out and be sure to join the community on Discord, Patreon, all of us people. And a lot of people are running four and five figures basically weekly at this point. A bunch of people over on Superdraft, easier competition, easier chance at ROI based on the structure of these contests. Check it out down below. What are you waiting for? Let's start this slate off and we'll start it off as we always do, just basically on this salary basis order. We could start up top right now where we have Mr. Justin Herbert, the rookie himself, who's coming off of some really bad performances, basically three straight performances in a row, his worst stretch of his career as a rookie to this point, and he's been facing some more stiffer competition. He has now seen three straight games below 20 fantasy points, but this is a very nice get right spot against this Raiders team. This Raiders team is very bad. They're number 30 overall in pressure. They're bottom, basically borderline five in the league in coverage. And now you have Herbert coming in at an appropriate price point, $11,800 for somebody averaging close to 24 DraftKings points per game. And this Chargers team right now, Herbert throwing 41 and a half times per game. The Chargers team is calling the third most passing plays per game this year, right around 7.1 yards per attempt is the league average and 293 passing yards. Herbert is my highest projected player on this slate by about three fantasy points. So yes, I'm going to have interest in Justin Herbert. Is he somebody that you have to have interest in? No. And the big reason why is uh, not not only just on the slate, but on his team specifically, we have multiple players that are very close to his price point, multiple players that are above $10,000, Keenan Allen being 11000 and Austin Eckler being 10400 So in a world where, let's say Keenan Allen ends up going for 18 to 20 fantasy points and Eckler goes for 18 to 20 and Herbert's sitting there at 20 fantasy points, yeah, you can be damn sure that the cheaper options are likely going to be the ones that get into that optimal lineup more so, especially because I do believe Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler have a mega ceiling that just Justin Herbert probably doesn't get to as much, right? That 30 to 35 point ceiling, it's going to be a lot easier for Allen and Austin Eckler to get there based on multiple outs that they have. Obviously, the point per reception upside that Austin Eckler brings as a pass catching running back and just the overall volume that Keenan Allen continues to see. Now, Keenan Allen at $11,000 will have a great spot against LaMarcus Joyner in the slot, who's allowing 1.4 yards per cover this year and a 71% catch rate. You're having Keenan Allen. 10 plus targets, 10 plus, even with last week and in the past couple of weeks, also Neckler coming back and soaking up 30 plus targets, 34 targets, I believe to be exact. You still have 10 plus targets in seven out of the last eight games for Keenan Allen, who is now leading the NFL in overall targets, probably because Devontae Adams was hurt earlier this year with 11.1 per game on a 28% target share. Keenan Allen at this price point, he's actually not my second highest projected or even my third highest projected player, but he's very close to those guys who are second and third. I do have a lot of interest in Keenan Allen. He is a yes, but if you are only playing one to three lineups and I know a lot of people watching this are not playing that many lineups. Keenan Allen is somebody that in this upper range, I could get away from just because of Herbert and also because of this next man that we're going to be discussing. And that is one Austin Eckler. Now, Austin Eckler has continued to see this elite passing game usage as we suspect from him, but this is all, all the way up top is like a number one pass catching running back. This is Christian McCaffrey level since he's been back. In week 14, he had 15 rushing attempts, 79 yards. And then he basically comes in the passing game to see just as much, but to get the point per reception, nine catches, 67 yards, a very Christian McCaffrey-esque role there, except without the touchdowns. But he saw nine targets. He's now seen 34 targets in three weeks since returning, and he gets to go up. And oh boy, this is the best matchup you might be able to have as a running back, especially if you're a dual threat who breaks tackles. The Raiders, 
Las Vegas ranks dead last in tackling and 29th right now. Bottom four in the NFL, that is 29th overall in run defense. Austin Eckler is in a smash spot right now. I do prefer Austin Eckler to Keenan Allen. I might even prefer Austin Eckler at this point to Herbert. I have Herbert projected out for more points, but I have Eckler's floor and ceiling being higher. Eckler is my second highest projected player. Again, you could be following along right now on Patreon. And I do have Eckler also coming in as the second highest owned player, pushing when you factor in the captain and also the utility ownership. Currently have him at 59 overall ownership. Now, this is without a question of a doubt, a top loaded slate in terms of a lot of the guys who get a ton of usage. It's condensed offenses, right? You have the Chargers offense that does spread the ball around some. You get a lot of pass attempts in general, but where a lot of the production goes is definitely between Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. And on the opposite side of this one, you have Derek Carr, the quarterback we can talk about now, but his production is very much limited to, honestly, Darren Waller. You have some spike performances here and there from guys like Hunter Renfro. Nelson Aguilar pops up once every three weeks with a big game, but it's mainly Darren Waller. And those are the guys who are going to be next up. Now, a $10,000 Derek Carr is appropriately priced for a guy playing behind the 19th overall protection rate right now, and he's going to be facing the number 12 pass rush. He's averaging 33 attempts per game at 7.7 yards per attempt. Derek Carr has very quietly been great this year. Maybe it's going to slowly start to come out. And now just based on game scripts against the Jets, playing from behind, winning in the last second, right? This past week, getting down big against the Colts this last week, he's thrown 45 attempts or more in 300 plus yards in back-to-back games. Obviously, that's game script. They come into this one as four and a half point favorites, but you do have that upside projecting for four touchdowns that there can be a two to three touchdown performance here for Derek Carr. Again, I prefer Austin Eckler at $10,400, but Derek Carr right now is going to be somebody that I also have interest in. Now, if you're just tuning in for the first time, normally, like when we're up here, I might have a a one yes by some of these guys. So you can see that this is a very top loaded slate, which is going to hint that towards the bottom of the slate, we're going to have to find some sort of value in the mid range or the bottom, fade some of these guys up top. Right now, I don't really want to be saying that I want to fade Keenan Allen because I don't. But if you're playing one lineup, I would prefer getting to Eckler in one of the quarterbacks, which then makes it difficult to get to Keenan Allen. Now, if you play a cheaper captain or a mid price captain with a couple of cheap options, you can do that. And it's also worth pointing out at the top of this right now. Hopefully I'm recording this right now on Wednesday afternoon slash evening. It's going to be coming up Thursday morning. Maybe you're seeing this Thursday afternoon or night, but Henry Ruggs is on the COVID list. So he is not out. There's not, has not been any other news on other people potentially being close contacts. So if there is some other news that maybe, I don't know, Hunter Renfro or one of these other guys in the receiving group or somebody else that's going to be starting is going to be out. Don't worry. We'll talk about it on the Thursday night live stream. I'll also update it on everything on Patreon. So depending on when you're watching this, you can go down below, check out the projections, see how that alters my interest, my ownership, my rankings, all of that. So next up is Darren Waller. And I I do think that Austin Eckler is maybe a little bit underpriced or even appropriately priced. Out of all the guys that are up in this range, based on the price points of everybody above here, $10,000 plus, Darren Waller was somebody that I thought I might see more expensive than Derek Carr, similar to Austin Eckler, right? In that range. So maybe you get a slight discount here, but it's still over $9,000 for a tight end. But he's a tight end, very similar to Kelsey, Kelsey on a different level, operating as a wide receiver this year. It's going to be a fine spot in this matchup against White, who allows 1.26 yards per cover out and a 77% catch rate. You're getting Darren Waller just getting so much usage, a 28% target share for a tight end on nine targets, goes into the slot 13% of the time. And in his last two starts, 27 targets, seen seven or more targets in four straight games to this point. Honestly, he seems underpriced compared to the guys above him, just based on the skill sets. But when you factor it in and you look and you take a step back, right? You're not just uh, surrounded by the trees. You can actually see the forest at this point, right? We're going to notice that Darren Waller does need to have a big performance, like his normal performances that are pretty good, right? His performances of six catches for seven yards, and then he needs to get you that touchdown. Those 13 fantasy points at this price point probably don't pay off. So Darren Waller is going to be somebody that right now I'll list as a yes, because I do think that I'd probably push above 25%, which is normally where I put a guy as a yes, but it's going to be pretty timid on him and Keenan Allen. If you're only playing one lineup again, Eckler and one of the quarterbacks is where I early on want to be focusing on. Next up is going to be Mr. Josh Jacobs, who had some potential questions about playing last week, just from trolling some fantasy football people thought it was pretty funny. And then week 14, he gets the bad game script. But the nice thing to see, even in this terrible game script, getting down big, sees 18 opportunities, right? Five targets, 13 carries, ends up piling up up total in that game, about 74 total yards, 14 routes from, got those five targets on 18 opportunities. Nice to see that in a negative game flow. Vegas is projecting this one to be a neutral to positive game script for him. So you suspect maybe you can see 16 to 18 touches on the ground. He's number six in red zone roll, number three in evaded tackles, and number seven in yards created. When he has been healthy, even coming off of a poor performance because of the game script, he has been a very good running back. I don't have overwhelming interest in him, but he's going to be somebody that I like getting to. Just because the ceiling on these types of guys, Devante Booker still being involved. Jalen Rashard, not involved as much nowhere near, but we saw last week Jalen Rashard getting more involved because of the negative game script. There's still some ways that at $8,800, he can pay us off double touchdowns, a Nick Chubb type performance that we just saw a couple days back on that crazy Monday night football game. I'm not shocked if he's the captain or in a winning lineup, but I do prefer Waller. I do prefer Eckler and some guys, even if they are more expensive. Next up is Nelson Aguilar. And even with like, here's the thing, Henry Ruggs being out, he has not been that great of a producer this year. You probably get the rookie Brian Edwards, maybe some Zay Jones, the former Buffalo Bill filling in for those routes. Maybe they're going to split up basically 30 routes or so between the two 
them. Now, a lot of people are going to jump and say, it's Nelson Aguilar season. No, Nelson Aguilar gets the same role. Nelson Aguilar in this game, let's say you were going to project him to run 34 routes. He's going to run 34 routes. There's, there's not many more routes you can run. Now I get it. The target share of Henry Ruggs, who, I mean, his target share has not been good this year. Henry Ruggs target share right now, if I pull it up, Ruggs target share has been 10.8% and 4% in the red zone, right? So it's not somebody that's high usage. So for people that are going to say, oh, Nelson Aguilar, now he's definitely going to go from maybe seeing five targets to eight or nine. You're crazy. He, I don't even think he's going to go from seeing five to six targets in this one. Like, I don't think the projection changes all that much for Nelson Aguilar, who's already crazy expensive at $7,400. Now he'll have a neutral matchup against Michael Davis, who's been good as a cornerback, right? He allows 1.06 yards per cover. And Nelson Aguilar this year, he doesn't get all that much volume. 14% share and four and a half targets per game, 25% slot usage. Lately, he has been getting a little bit of a tick up here, 20 targets the last two games, six or more targets in four straight games. And the pretty crazy thing about Nelson, Nelson Aguilar is last week, nobody wanted to play him. And I mean, I don't really want to play this guy in ever anyways, right? On a showdown slate, it becomes a little bit more appealing because there's less options. But in week 13, he had 215 air yards. That was one of the highest numbers we've seen all season long. And then the week after that, nobody wants to play him. 11 targets, 215 air yards because he only catches four passes. And then he comes out with a 21 point performance, 24 points because he got the 100 yard bonus if you're talking about DraftKings, five catches, nine targets, 100 yards. He sees another big air yard day with 131. Nelson Aguilar has now seen 130 plus air yards in three out of his last four games. So this is very good to see. Now, obviously they were pushing against the Jets playing from behind and in week 14 against Indy and against KC in week 11. So if they're playing from behind, Nelson Aguilar will get these deep shots downfield. He'll probably see three or four deep targets downfield. So there is some upside there. But as of right now, again, if you're playing 150 lineups, maybe I get some shares of Nelson Aguilar. My projection on him at $7,400 is not enough for me to really want to get there in an overwhelming way, especially if you're only playing one to a couple of lineups. Next up is Mr. Mike Williams, who had to leave that last game right away, basically, right? So we're going to have to track what Mike Williams is doing. If Mike Williams is in, I have interest. He's going to face Lawson, who's been healthy and good, allowing just 0.86 yards per cover so far this season. But he does have 28 pounds on Lawson, so Mike Williams will have an advantage. The obvious downfield upside at $6,200, averaging right now 6 targets per game on an 18% share. That is a 15% share and he's number eight in average depth of target. I think he's a decent play. I don't think he's a standout play. I'll have interest because of that downfield upside and red zone potential, but just know that there's a chance that he does indeed miss. He is dealing with an injury right now. His teammate at $5,800, I think I'm going to have a slightly, a little bit more interest in, and that's going to be the tight end Hunter Henry, who continues to see very great usage and continues to just be due for even more touchdowns. Even though he had that week's of back-to-back touchdowns, it's a tougher spot this week. Going to be facing linebackers who only give up 0.46 yards per cover out so far this year to tight ends. But Hunter Henry is definitely an above average tight end, averaging 6.4 targets per game, 31% slot usage, 12% out wide. So he's in a very good spot majority of the time, 51% of the time in the slaughter out wide. That's very good to see for a tight end. And six or more targets in seven of his last nine games, Hunter Henry is in play for me. Now, this is the guy who's going to be very interesting for you, right? And that man's name is going to be Tyron Johnson, who basically until this past game when Mike Williams got hurt, all we saw this guy do is catch deep touchdowns. Week four has a 53 yard touchdown, his only reception in the game on five routes run, right? In week nine, he runs three routes and catches a 50-yard bomb. In week 11, he catches a 54-yard bomb, right? He has two catches for 63 yards in week 12. He's just catching 50-yard bombs a couple times a year. And then he comes out in week 14, and it turns out he's the backup to Mike Williams. Mike Williams gets hurt. He immediately runs 36 routes, a full-time role at 76% of the snaps, catches six of his seven targets, a touchdown of 55 yards. He scores 17 and a half fantasy points. It was his best performance of the year, and he was very steady and consistent. So right now at $5,000, no interest if Mike Williams plays. He goes back to being the wide receiver four, or at best, he'll catch like a 40 yard bomb and get you five points. But at this price point, that's not even great. And that's like your at best scenario. Okay. Maybe a touchdown's at best, but we're not going to be banking on that at this price tag. But if Mike Williams is out, yeah, he's going to run the routes. He's going to go out there and run 30 plus routes in this game. If they are playing from behind, like Vegas thinks 35 routes. And that's when I come out and actually have interest. So right now, no interest in Tyron Johnson, but if Mike Williams is out, then obviously no interest in Mike Williams. And I would actually get very close to putting a yes by Tyrone Johnson at this point, going down a little bit more. You have Hunter Renfro, who we know the upside here is not going to be that great. I'd rather pay up a little bit more to get uh, access to a higher ceiling player. You'll have a matchup in the slot against Harris Jr., which is not a great spot. He's only allowing a 65% catch rate so far this season. Renfro is averaging about four and a half targets per game. He has seen six plus targets and eight or more fantasy points in three straight games. I have Renfro on Patreon link down below. You could follow along. Projected out for about 10 fantasy points. So it keeps him in play for me just on that a little bit of volume at 4,800, especially if Johnson is not going to be all that much of a factor if Mike Williams plays. Next up, we get the kickers. If you watch my content, you know that in some of these higher total games, I don't like getting to the kickers as much. This game right now is totaled out for above 50, closer 
closer to 52 fantasy points. So I'll have the kickers in play. I won't be playing two kickers in the lineup and I probably won't get all that much exposure to the kickers in general. Maybe one guy I'll get at like 20%, the other one at like 10 or 15%, which will probably be around the field, maybe slightly below. But in higher total games, there's more touchdowns. There's usually more yardage when that happens, more receptions. So some of the cheaper guys are guys around the price point like a Hunter Renfro or some of these guys a little bit cheaper down here that we could talk about in a second that are wide receivers and running backs. They have more opportunities, more plays, more touchdown potential when the total is going to be higher. If you want to roster one or two kickers, you usually want it so that there's seven to 10 fantasy points is a high enough score. So it enters the winning lineup, which normally means more field goals, less touchdowns and less overall scoring in production. Next up, we have both defenses. And honestly, I'm not that big on the defenses in this one. They're not that cheap. They're not in like the $2,000 range at $3,400 and $3,000. You have the Chargers defense being decent now that they're healthy, right? You have Chris Harris back in healthy. You have Casey Hayward back in healthy to this point. You have both on the defensive line playing better as he's been healthier for now, basically a month. So they rank 12th overall, 15th versus the run. And basically they're top half of the league and everything. Coverage, pass rush, tackling. They're basically right around 12th in all those categories. Right now, if I'm just playing a couple lineups, like if I play my 150s, I'll mark these guys as an X and just say that they're going to be my exposures. They're not going to be overwhelmingly high, maybe like 12, 15%. But if we're just playing a couple lineups up to 10, even 20 max, I'm not going to have much interest in the defenses. They do possess some sort of upside, right? They probably come out here and I mean, these defenses on the air are scoring you like four fantasy points a game. If they get you that six or seven point game and none of the value hits, well, then they're going to be in the winning lineup. I just question that none of the value will hit. And even then I'd rather pivot to the kickers if none of the value hits who have a more stable floor and ceiling of around like eight fantasy points in this one on a median projection, ceiling of 12 plus. I don't think you're going to get that out of these defenses right now from the Chargers and the Raiders at their respective price points and just pressure rates and skill in general. So now we are approaching these cheaper guys below 3000. And I do think there's a decent amount of options. That's why the defenses and kickers are not as appealing to me. So we can scroll down a little bit more so you can see the rest of these guys. And I also say, hit that like button for me big old subscribe button as we push towards 35,000 subscribers, about 500 or so away from that number, which is the goal by the end of the year. As I record this, we basically got two weeks to do so. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a nudge, a little bit of a push so we can try and get there as soon as possible. I'll also let you know that down below, I do have a Patreon projections, rankings, ownership, game by game notes, a Sunday closing thoughts podcast. NBA is starting up by the time that you're watching this in a couple of days. Next Tuesday, the NBA starts off. You're going to be having NBA almost every single day. I think like Christmas Eve, there's no NBA, but then there's basically every single day with NBA, there's no stoppage either for the NBA, which is fantastic to see. Like there's not going to be an all-star break. It's just going straight through 72 games per team. So get ready for that. We'll be all ready. I got all the research prepped, everything prepped for it. I cannot wait for that season. We're here for the NFL, lots of content. So check it out down below. You can follow along for this video as well for all the Patreon projections, ownership rankings, all that stuff linked down below. Patreon.com backslash Sal underscore Vetri underscore. So the first guy that we're going to be getting to is Jalen Guyton. And Jalen Guyton's an interesting character because this guy's just been running a full-time role every single week. But what has he been doing? For the most part, he's just been running a bunch of uh, wind sprints, right? He had a team high 40 routes in week 14, but continues to just run these wind sprints, just running straight with not much production. One catch for eight yards on three targets. He's seen an 8% target share in three targets per game so far this year, but he's ran 40 plus routes in three straight games. The games before that, 27 routes, 36, 39, 35. This is dating all the way back now to week five, where in every single game, game but one, he's ran 35 or more routes. The problem is he only has in that span one game over six and a half fantasy points because he found the end zone on a deep touchdown, two catches, 84 yards back in week seven against Jacksonville and Trey Herndon scored 16.4 points. So he's just not getting separation. There's not a lot of time in a lot of these games because the Chargers offensive line in general has been banged up a lot. So not a lot of time for Herbert to look deep. Austin Eckler being there is just another cop out kind of to check that ball down. And that's what he's been doing a lot. Just get those easy like six to 12 to 15 plus yard plays. So Jalen Guyton's a tough one to really want to get to because yeah, you might get like four or five fantasy points, but honestly, that could be decent. Like he's projecting out for me around that range, five fantasy points at $2,800. We know the ceiling is a deep touchdown. We know that he's seeing some nice usage at least, right? In the last three weeks alone, he's seen 14 targets. He has seen six catches. That's not great overall if you're trying to play him in your season long leagues or at $6,000, but he's $2,800. So Jalen Guyton, he's not a yes, but he'll be in play for me. The next two guys we can tackle at the same time at this point, and that's going to be Kalen Blige and Justin Jackson. The backups at this point to Austin Eckler. Week 14, you saw with Jackson back, Kalen Blige saw seven carries and a overall target on two receptions, ran 11 routes. So he saw some nice usage. His overall production in that game though was just eight touches for 20 yards. Not great. Expect only like six to eight touches a game with Justin Jackson back. And Justin Jackson came back off the IR. He saw himself six touches on six opportunities. He caught three overall receptions on seven routes. That is a very high target rate, right? Three receptions, three targets on seven routes. That's not going to withstand. That's kind of above expectation, I would say. So I would expect both Justin Jackson and Kalen Balazs. If you want to play one, I'd play Kalen Balazs, but I would expect them both to basically see like 
four to five touches each. And if they're not scoring a touchdown, they're going to be kind of useless for you. So prefer Guyton to both of them at this point. But Devontae Booker is somebody who's interesting. $1,800 here. And I actually think he's decent. Last week, Josh Jacobs returns. He still sees seven opportunities and seven touches. Catches three passes on 13 routes. So a little bit more sustainable than what Justin Jackson did on just seven routes. He had double the routes and he saw that usage. So that's good to see. Now they're playing from behind. So I don't know how much you can actually rely on those targets, but he has been getting targets and receptions in basically every game this year. That is now five or more opportunities in nine straight games for Devontae Booker. Many of those games were with Josh Jacobs and he has a reception in five straight games. So at $1,800, you could do a lot worse than a guy who's probably going to see six touches for 20 to 30 yards more times than not. And then you're hoping that two of those are receptions so that you get that five or six fantasy points. At $1,800, is five or six fantasy points winning the slate? I mean, a big shrug emoji, right? It's probably not, but that's why the upside's there for more than that. A couple more receptions. A Jacobs potentially re-aggravates an injury, right? The chance at red zone work with the touchdown. So Devontae Booker, just because we're getting limited on options down here, will be in play for me. Jalen Rossard, not so much. He's only averaging 1.8 attempts and 1.6 targets per game. He had a season high usage in week 14 in the passing game. He had 16 routes, the second most that he's seen all season long. And he ended up catching four passes on five targets, but they were just down so big in that game. So I kind of chalk it up to game script in that one. I mean, you saw all these running backs getting usage in the passing game last week, even five targets for Josh Jacobs. Foster Murray, who's not going to be interested, ended up catching a 47 yard touchdown on two targets, eight routes run, but he's only seen a total of 41 routes this year and seven total targets. Again, his first usage in basically a month and a half, no interest. If anything, he's overpriced at a thousand dollars. He should probably, he has touchdown upside, of course, because he's a tight end and they do use him on some of these sneaky plays like last week, but thousand dollars that's overpriced and now we actually get into some guys that make it a little bit more appealing to not play the kickers and defenses because henry ruggs is out so zay jones and brian edwards i assume these guys split the usage here and i do think that it's going to be pretty split some people might just think that the flashy rookie brian edwards takes that role i mean he got beat out pretty easily by nelson aguilar who has shown to be good this year and kind of having a breakout with the raiders but i don't feel all that confident in brian edwards not getting too much separation dealing with injuries as a rookie so what you had in week 14 was no routes run for zay jones in week 13 he ran two routes played six percent of the snaps he has not exceeded more than one reception for 2.8 points since week four. And we've seen Henry Ruggs hurt this year. So it's not looking good for Zay Jones. So that's why I think it's going to be split up. But Brian Edwards also ran no routes in week 14. Week 13 saw a little bit more usage than Zay Jones. Saw five routes run to Zay Jones two, 15% of the snaps to Jones six, but he had no receptions and he has not exceeded one reception in a game since week three. So these guys are probably going to split the snaps. You're hoping that you get like two catches for like 30 something yards because they're so cheap. So they're both in play for me. If I had to choose one, I kind of want to see what the inactives and actives are. I assume they're both going to be active. This is also assuming that nothing breaks between my recording this and tomorrow morning that these guys are even out or other wide receivers are out. If other wide receivers are out, like Nelson Aguilar, yeah, these guys become a lot more appealing. If one of these guys are out, if it's going to be Brian Edwards is out because he was a close contact, then go to Zay Jones or vice versa. If I had to pick one, I just know that Brian Edwards is more of a talent. If he's been dealing with injuries, if he's a rookie, so it's setting him back a little bit, I know he's more of a talent. He's also half the price. I would choose Brian Edwards here. He was also being used more than Zay Jones in the limited sample for the last couple of weeks before this Henry Ruggs injury. And Zay Jones, we've seen it in Buffalo. We've seen it here. This guy is slow. He can't get separation. He has not been that great. He's kind of a red zone target, which is nice and it can get you some upside. But I think Brian Edwards is just a more athletic player. I'd be hanging my hat on Brian Edwards if choosing one of them. And then we'll close it out with guys. Look, ooh, yeah, like many content creators probably not going to touch on them. But look, I'm, I'm not cocky. I'm confident here. I'm trying to give you as much information as you can. This is the best YouTube channel for free content. And even the people putting this type of information behind a paywall, you're getting it right here for free for you. Smack them with the information, making you more educated to beat those people who they got their subscribers behind a paywall just for a basic breakdown on the slate. Now, if you want tools, projections, rankings, all that stuff, actual tools to help you get even better. Yeah, put that behind a paywall. But the breakdown of content behind a paywall for your podcast, or whatever else, come on now, give your head a shake. I'm doing it better than any of these people in the game right here on this channel. Again, confidence, not cockiness, because we're trying to fill your head with the best information out there. Even these guys down here in the slate, like Jason Wynn, who only has ran five total routes in the last three games and no receptions, just two receptions since week nine. Yeah, it's $200. You're hoping for a fall into a touchdown here for Jason Wynn in prime time, play action pass on the goal line, something like that. But we're not going to bank on that. It's a no for Jason Wynn for me, dog. And then some other tight ends, Donald Parham, the XFL star, my Dallas Renegades. I cannot wait for the XFL to return in 2022. No usage in week 14 after running a season high in routes overall and snaps in week 13's blowout loss. Only five catches total this year. He's a touchdown or bust. He also dropped a touchdown. Would have been another win for this team. Not going to get there either. And then this next name is actually going to be interesting. You might not think it. $200 KJ Hill, the rookie out of Ohio State, late round pick for them. Look, he's only going to see the field if Mike Williams is out. Last week, he ended up running 10 routes. He caught his only target for four yards, and that was his most usage basically since week 
5 when Keenan Allen got hurt against the Saints, I believe, on a Thursday night football game. So either way, I don't really have much interest in KJ Hill, but it's at least important to talk about him because if Mike Williams misses, it's going to be the Tyron Johnson show, but then KJ Hill slots in as the wide receiver four and probably runs eight to 12 routes. Now those eight to 12 routes might not mean anything, but it could mean two catches for 30 yards. And now you're looking at something at just $200. So KJ Hill, I'm going to put him as a no right now. If Mike Williams is out, he'll probably still be a no. He won't project out that great, but it's at least important to keep in mind in your head. If you're looking for a $200 player, I'm choosing KJ Hill over Parham and Witten. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I appreciate you all a ton. This is the Thursday night football video. We will be live at 6 p.m. East Coast time for an hour answering your questions. So hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and the big old subscribe button as it pops up. I appreciate you all in advance for that one. Friday closing thoughts video, Saturday that one, dude. Saturday also we will be live at noon Eastern time, breaking down, yes, the two game Saturday slate. Be sure you already watched that video that went out on Wednesday. And then Sunday morning, we have our Patreon closing thoughts podcast. You can follow along, link down below on Patreon, and also our YouTube live stream for an hour and a half at 10 a.m. East Coast time. That's the rest of the schedule for this week. The NBA starts next Tuesday. A lot of stuff going on in the DFS space. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Best of luck on this slate. I will see you all at 6 p.m. East Coast time Thursday night.